Hello guys, I am Travis Smith. Today, I'm going to be doing the interviewing today. Jim Goza, welcome to your own interview. Thank you, series. it's great to be here. Hi! So you are the guitarist and vocalist, or backup vocalist in The Next Unknown. Yes, yes, lead guitar, backup vocals, that's me. How long have you been playing guitar? Man, I, I got my first guitar when I was 11 years old. It was a Mexican Strat. Thing played wonderfully. It came in one of those little packs with like the guitar and the amp and the cables and everything you needed to get started. And uh, ever since then, man, I wasn't like super serious when I was young, but you know, as I grew to love it, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Did you start out wanting to play ripping solos like you play now? Yes. Yes. I always, I always had tremendous respect for rock bands. Um, I always admired the lead guitarist who could just, you know, playing lead guitar is your own version of singing. So while you have a singer and you have a lead guitarist, they're both kind of singers, but they just use different instruments to achieve a similar result. Who are your favorite guitarists? Oh man, David Gilmour from Pink Floyd is the reason I play guitar. The solos for Comfortably Numb are the first solos I ever taught myself. Yes, I am self-taught. I didn't really ever take lessons. I love Brent Hines from Mastodon, their lead guitarist. He's a massive inspiration. I love Tony Iommi, Zach Wilde, Tosin Abasi. So actually, Zach Wilde and I met. Um, I keep one of his guitar picks in my guitar case at all times for inspiration. I work at a, a, at a gym, at a, a, at a gym, at a, a, at a gym, and Black Label Society was playing at our town center, and a guy came in with like this super gruff voice, and like this long hair and this big beard, and he's like, hey, can I, uh, this is a horrible Zach Wilde impression, hey, can I take a look at the facility? And he was talking to the front desk person, and I just kind of looked up, because the voice sounded really familiar, and he was like, alright, thanks. And then I was like... Holy shit. And so he starts walking around to look. I swoop around the corner and just like catch him right there. And I'm like, are you Zach Wilde? And he's like, yeah, man, how's it going? And he shook my hand. And then I was like, dude, I'm not going to bother you. Enjoy looking around the gym. But it's great to meet you. You're a huge inspiration. He was like, hey, thanks, man. And so he goes and checks out our gym. And <clears throat> I'm over training another client. And he, I see like Zach Wilde coming out of the corner of my eye. He's like walking toward me. And then, and then he hands me a guitar pick. And he's like, hey man, I'll see you at the show. And I was like, oh my God. So that's my meeting Zach Wilde story. Super cool. That is a wild story. Yeah. Hey, 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 right. So you say you're a trainer. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite muscle to exercise? The brain. The mind. <laughs> you have to work your mind or the body. So the place. process is you have them come into the gym. Yes, and then we and just they, think. We spend 30 minutes sitting in silence just thinking as hard as we possibly can. No, here's why I say that. How okay? do you know that they're thinking? Uh, the more odorous the room becomes, the more mm. I know they're really squeezing as hard as they can. Did you say stinking? So uh, the reason why I say the mind, and that's actually true, that's, my, that's the most important muscle to work, is because the mind connects to the entire body, and, if, and we have to build a mind-muscle connection whenever you're working the muscle. Because if I tell you that when you're doing a lat pull down and you start coming here and I say I want you to squeeze your lat as hard as you can and you haven't built that connection, you don't necessarily know what a squeezed lat feels like. The mind informs the body, but the body also informs the mind. So they work cohesively, synergistic. <laughs> Speaking of mimes, have you ever <laughs> trained a mime? I've never trained a mime, but I have had people use phantom weights before. I was like I, like, I want you to pretend like you're holding a jump rope in your hand and jumping over the rope. Because jump rope is hard for some people. The coordination. Back to the guitar inside of the Next Unknown band. Yeah. When you're writing your parts, do you feel this band sets apart from other bands that you've been in? I'm fortunate in that with all of us in the band, I'm given such a an already beautifully painted canvas to then put my touch on. Um, everyone in the band is super creative. And that allows me to open up my creativity to kind of add my little flourishes. As a lead guitarist, I typically write my stuff toward the end of a song being completely written. And so it's really nice to be able to just sprinkle my pretty stuff wherever I want and, and have everybody be like either thumbs up or thumbs down, let's change a little bit. That's what's really nice is the creative potential there is super high because everybody is so talented. What is your favorite song to play in the set? Ooh. Um, Florian rips, and you all don't know that song yet, um, but it's wonderful. My Masquerade 
is also a great song to play, and we just got out of the studio this last weekend recording that, so look for that bad boy coming your way soon. What was that experience like? It was fun. It was extreme. Uh, toward my solo at the end, my right hand is just going the whole time for like 16 bars or something. And so, Can you do that again for yeah. 16 bars? So that's what it was like in the studio. Can't wait um, to hear it. Yeah, it's going to be real good. No, the solo turned out awesome. Uh, uh, the mix sounds incredible right now. We're still kind of working some things out, but it's going to be a great song. Kind of like a surfer rock vibe. What have you learned from being a physical trainer that you bring into the music world or vice versa? Oh, that's a really good question because they are not mutually exclusive. One thing that I have learned through dedicating myself to physical fitness is that if there's ever pain, a good pain, there's a difference between a bad pain and a good pain, then you push through it to achieve the result you want. Um, if you ever hit a plateau, with your training, you have to be creative in ways that you've never had to think before in order to get yourself over that hump. The same way is with creative block. You have to really get creative and, and try to use different methods you maybe have never used before to try to get yourself over that hump in order to continue the creativity. So the one definitely helps the other, I'd say. Band do you listen to the most? I mean, it would probably have to be Mastodon. Favorite food? Pickles. You know that already. Favorite, favorite movie? Big Lebowski. Favorite food to eat while watching your favorite movie? Pickles. Dill or sweet and sour bread and butter or baby griffins? <laughs> or, or if you like pre-pickled cucumbers? <laughs> Don't you ever say bread and butter or sweet pickles in this house, mister. Dill or no dill? Bread and butter not. <laughs> Whenever your parents named you Jim, uh -huh. did they foresee this physical training future? <laughs> no, but isn't that funny? Because my name is Jim Goza. Like I goes to the gym a lot. I'm Jim at the gym That's in absolutely crazy. everyone's phone. And at one time I was the GM at the gym. So I was Jim the GM of the gym. This is real. This is real and factual. Favorite gym? Clubhouse Fitness on Dixon Street, baby. No, Stones. Like a stone, like a... Oh, G-E-M. <laughs> you gotta specify, there are many gems. I did. A gym. Oh. I'm privy to a tiger's eye. Wow. Privy. <laughs> I like a tiger's eye. I like the way it, it changes opals also. I love an opal. Opals are beautiful. Also, it's a lovely little girl's name. What do you want to call a little girl opal? That's a cute name, right? Best live concert you've ever seen. I saw Roger Waters with his Pink Floyd tour, and that was mind-blowing. Did you watch 90s wrestling growing up? Yes. Favorite wrestler? Oh, Ultimate Warrior. Why? Because he is so insane. And insanity is something that intrigues me. Like our song Crazy. Super fun to write. I'm sure we'll put it in one of the boxes at the end of the video so you can actually go watch it. But I loved his makeup. Uh, I loved those bands around his arms that just oh, yeah. like made his biceps explode. I loved all of his interviews where he's like snarling and talking about the normals and how we can be normals, me Jane. I just love him. He's great. So you are a gamer. Yeah, self-proclaimed. I'm not like great or anything, but I love some video games. What video games do you love? Dude, I am jamming on that new Call of Duty, uh, Warzone, right now. It's their new, uh, Battle Arena, whatever it's called, How Battle you, Royale. What is the difference between that and the Battle Royale mode on Black Ops 4? Black Ops 4. So, the difference between Blackout and Warzone, there are actually quite a few different... Three hours later. But I haven't looked at any metrics or anything, but I feel like it's way bigger. Um, Many months later. ...to outfit your gun, you just pick up whatever you have. Uh, there's a bigger emphasis on money. 75 years later. Which is super cool. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Do they have stray billy goats on the map? Um, no. It's different than games that I'm playing. <laughs> Do you have stray billy goats on a map? Are you playing Goat Simulator right now? Have you played Goat Simulator? <laughs> Travis. 
It's so much fun. I see that you sip from your Star Wars cup. Oh, yes. Are you a Star Wars fan? No, I hate it. No, of course I'm a Star Wars fan. I love Star Wars. I got a Stormtrooper on the side of my car. Uh, I, I, am a, I am a massive Star Wars nerd. Favorite Star Wars movie? What's the best one? It would have to be five, Empire Strikes Back. Battle of Hoth. Although it should have been called Cold. And that raises another question. Endor, the forest moon, shouldn't that be called Outdoor? I haven't seen any of them. Is that still in reference to... Get out of my house! You really haven't seen any Star Wars movies? Travis. Not. That is a travesty. You want to wrap this up? That's what she said. All right. <laughs> So, probably what I'm going to do is put a subscribe orb right between our heads. Uh, I highly recommend you press that orb. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I'll also put a couple of videos down here and here to where you can watch uh, different things. Yeah, squeeze it. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun how squeeze it is? Yeah. <laughs>